Hello ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Thomas here, and this is going to be part 3 of the Buku World Tour, where I tour Mr. Buku's world, and we're back where we left off from part 2, where we're, we were going to start touring Double Cheese's house, but first, before we do that, I'm going to go back in the bank and show you guys something that I didn't show you in part 2, because I totally forgot that this thing was even in here until Mr. Buku himself left a comment on part two of the Buku World Tour, the video. Um, he left a, me uh, a comment saying that I didn't show you guys this and was just wondering if I didn't want to show you guys and to leave it a, a, you know, a secret or if I forgot about it and I totally forgot about that this thing was in here. When he f you know, said w what he said in the comment I was like thinking to myself, what's he talking about? But then I remembered, oh yeah, the, the secret wall, which is this, the transforming wall. So we're in the vault, and see the lights come on too. And when I hit that button, you know, the wall transforms and opens up and reveals these hidden chests. And you can put your gold in there, diamonds, and some more gold. So yeah, I just want to show you guys that really quick because I totally forgot that this thing, you know, was even in here, which is crazy because it's such a cool you know, device totally hides completely you, you can't even tell there's lights up there you can't even tell there's anything behind the walls or anything oh, I didn't know there was stuff in there, dang it so yeah, that's, this is what that looks like right here, you know pretty crazy let me get rid of all that crap. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh wow. Well, I got a bunch of diamonds. Diamonds for everybody. Alright, we'll go back out here and we'll, we'll tour Double Cheese's house. It's a modern house, as you guys can see. He's got a ton of dogs. Um, he's got the outside pool here in the front of the house. You know, He's got the diving board. He's got some glowstone in the pool. He's got some tables here, the big front deck with the you know the wood deck out here. He's got like a like a fire pit or like a grill or something, whatever this is supposed to be represent. I'm not sure. I'll show you guys the outside of the house really quick. Here's the side. Got the roof with the fireplace up there. Here's the back of it, and here's this side. And now we'll go inside of it. And see, these are what I was talking about. I think I said it in part one of the Buku World Tour. I like saying that. The Buku World Tour. Sounds cool. But uh, this... Oh, man. It was supposed to give me a door back. The doors were messed up, man. Since I did... I think it was TU-12 or TU-13. The doors got messed up. And now they're fixed. Even though I'm not saving it. So I don't know why I just wasted my time doing that. Don't ask me. But when you come in the house, first thing you see is the kitchen. Got a table here. Got the refrigerator. This is supposed to be like, I guess, a dishwasher. You got the stove here. And through here, we got like the living room. You know, you got the TV with the speakers on the each side. A couch. Fish tank. There's a bar right here. Here's two more access points into the house. And then you got some bookshelf here. And back through this side, this is supposed to be like a gaming room. You know, you got like a pool table over here. Oh, there's another entry point into the house. I didn't even see this. And then this is like a like a basketball game. You know, like you see in arcades where you get, you know, it, it feeds you the basketballs and you shoot them into the hoop. See how many you can get. So that's what that thing's supposed to be. There's like a fireplace, pinball machines, and I'll head upstairs. And this is like the bedroom, and here's the fireplace. Got a desk, computer, the master bed, the king size master bed thingy bopper. I like that word too, thingy a bopper. You got a deck out here. You can come out and get an awesome view of the city. You got the bank there, the nightclub 
over there were, you know, behind in the background of the bank. The top of the synagogue, the hospital, the lighthouse. We'll, we'll be checking that out a little bit later. Maybe not in this video, maybe. We'll see. So that's Double Cheese's house. Now we'll move down, and there's the gas station we looked at in part two. So now we'll check out the hospital. So here's the hospital. And I'll, well actually, first, I'm going to show you guys this too. He named this world Ast Astoria. Welcome to Astoria. As you can see right there, it says, Welcome over there to Astoria. And back to the hospital. Um, something I want to say is a lot of people have given Mr. Buku a lot of crap about his hospital, saying that he stole his uh, this design from a guy named Corrales. And if you don't know who Corrales is, he is a Minecraft builder. He plays it on the PC, and he uploads YouTube videos regularly. And he's a really popular, you know, YouTuber. Corrales is. And a lot of people say Mr. Buku uh, stole Corrales' hospital design. And I've seen Corrales' hospital, and it looks nothing like this. The only similarity is that Buku used iron blocks, and so did Corrales. But if you look at this hospital, and then go and look at Corrales', they really have no similarity when it comes to the design of the hospital. You know... I don't even think the roof, but for example, maybe just the roof, like the top piece there where it's like, you know, layered. You know, you got this and it comes out and then goes up and comes out and goes up. Maybe something like that. And then people are like, oh, you stole this design. No, it, it looks nothing alike. And people were giving them crap in a video that someone else did kind of the same thing I'm doing right now. Someone toured Buku's world and put it up. And people that were watching were saying that, oh, you stole that design, but, you know, whatever. I just, I had to say that because it, it, it even annoys me because we don't steal people's designs. We might look at someone's design and get inspiration. And that's kind of like what I'm doing this video for is for people to see this stuff so I can show it off for my friend. And you guys can get inspiration from it and see his, you know, creations. So, yeah. But anyways, this is the hospital. And this is, you know, the front of the hospital here. And he's got the red cross up there. And you can see it says hospital there. He's got the fountain here in the front. And then down here, you got these like driveways right in here. And these are for like ambulances to drive in and out of the hospital. You know, to drop off, you know, patients that need, you know, medical needs. So yeah, that's what those are for. We'll go around the hospital. I'll show you each side. You know, so you guys can get good angles. And then here's the back. This would be like another entrance for an ambulance. You know, the ambulance might be parked in here like this. And be like, one nine or nine or we need we need an ambulance over here and they'll be like, Alright, ten four, copy that, wee wee and then they'll come pulling out Hopefully they're not driving that fast because that was pretty fast. Um but yeah, that's what that's supposed to be. A little hospital ambulance parky thing in a bop I gotta quit saying that thing in a bop I say it too much now I've overused it but yeah here's the back of the hospital he's got the H for hospital the Red Cross and as you can see we'll see it when we go inside but he's got like a, um, a skywalk or a I don't know what you call that I, we're just gonna call it a skywalk where it's connected the buildings together with a, um, a walkway and then here's this side. And now we'll go inside the hospital. Oh, actually, let me show you this first. This is the helipad, if you didn't already know that, which I'm sure you guys looked at it and were like, oh, that's a helipad. It's pretty, you know, um, what's the word? Obvious? That's the word. There we go. Obvious. It's pretty obvious, a helipad. You know, he's got the flashing torches here. I'll go in here real quick and show you basically what's going on I won't try to explain it too much but as you can see this mine carts on on drugs because it's like not even on the track in some parts it's whoa it's like a NASCAR but 
But yeah, the mine cart goes around and it hits the detector rail, you know, and it lights it up and sends, you know, power up to here and flashes these torches and those torches flash the ones above them. So that's basically how that works. I may have made a tutorial on that before, I don't know. Maybe I will one day if I haven't, I don't know. But that's the flashing torches. And there's a few different ways you can do that, but that was the way he had to do it with the, you know, the accessibility, the room, you know, that he could fit that in there. Because really, it doesn't look, look like you can fit all that in there, but he managed to fit it in that space in there. But yeah, we'll go into the hospital here. He's got the automatic sliding doors. And here's where you would come running in the hospital and be like, Oh my god, I need to see this or that person. What room are they in? And they'll tell you which room and you'll go charging up the stairs and go find that person because they're hurt and you want to go check on them. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, but each floor, he has color-coded. This is like, I think, well, that's obviously, yeah, green. But then up here, it's red. Yeah, he's got red. I'm not going to go every floor because it's not all the same. It's basically laid out the same. But here we got red. You know, you got waiting. It's like a waiting room, basically. And here's where another person would be behind. Like, the nurses would be back here. And then over here, you got, like, a either a picture or a TV. I don't even know. Whenever I see these pictures, I always think of TVs because every time I make a TV, I use this picture, the karate scene, for my TV screens. But I think it's just supposed to be a picture, not a TV. I don't know. But here we're on the you know the bridge walk here, the skywalk thingy. And over here, we have some of the rooms. This is room 101. Here is the hospital bed. I just went to sleep. Um, here's the bathroom. And some more seating and stuff. And all the rooms are pretty much the same. So I'm not going to go in them all. You can see there's more rooms over here. And there's more rooms over here. Like a little desk back here. So yeah, there's that. Um, let me go back up here. Or actually, no, let me go out right here. This is, you know, an access way to the helipad. Let's see, how many floors is there? We're not going to count the first floor. And we won't count this floor here. I want to count how many floors there are for, like, hospital rooms. This would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... So yeah, there's like eight floors, and as you can see, they're all color-coded. So yeah, that's cool. Um, and then again, here's the hospital rooms where we were inside. So down here, this is like the, the cafeteria or the kitchen, whatever you want to call it, for the hospital. This is where some of the patients can come, or some of the nurses or doctors, you know, you come in here for lunch. And they can be like, give me some food. And then you get your food. And then in here we got a cash register. And then we got, he did the floors with the uh, furnaces. Here's a stove. Refrigerator. So yeah, there's that. And then we got uh, mustard and ketchup. It ain't a kitchen or a, a restaurant or a cafeteria without ketchup and mustard. Mustard and ketchup. Gotta have it. So yeah, that's the hospital. We're gonna leave the hospital now. I think we spent too much time there, even though it's an awesome hospital. But I don't want to spend the whole video there. But yeah, I love it. I think he did a great job on it. So next, we'll look at this. And this is his bridge. It's like a, a lift bridge. A little drawbridge that would lift up. For his yacht to get out. See his yacht would be parked there. And obviously if the bridge which is right there was down. The yacht couldn't get out. You know it would be stuck in this little bay. And you would just have to live on your yacht forever. And you would never get to explore with your yacht. So he made this bridge to where it looks like you know it's functional. Which obviously in Minecraft you can't 
make you know this many blocks move up that high I mean it would take like the whole world to make this you know you'd have to have pistons just everywhere to make this work and I don't even think then it would work so yeah you just you know you gotta use your imagination that's pretty much what this game's all about it's using your imagination especially when you're just building you know structures and you know buildings and things like that it's all in your you know it's all part of your imagination so yeah this is supposed to be like a little drawbridge here and these water wheels are supposed to be how you know it lifts up you know they spin like cables would lift it you, you know what I mean so yeah there's that and he's got the flashing torches to warn people that the bridge is going up so you don't drive off into the water be like this oh no the bridge is gone and then you crash into the water and that would be a bad day so yeah there's the bridge and I think it's a pretty awesome design if you ask me so over here we'll move on to this this here is his cinema or his theater whatever you want to call it but it, this one he builds can you know called the cinema so yeah this is his cinema and I know he loves and likes everything he built but I think this was one of the things he was most proud of and I can see why because the design of this thing is awesome with these arches and it's just cool looking so I'll give you guys a, a you know tour around the outside and as you can see on the side here, it says cinema. And it's all one word. None of the letters are broken up. They're all together, which I think, you know, looks good. So that's that side. Then we got the, the back here. And it also says cinema down there. And then we'll check this side out. This side's where, you know, he's got the parking lot over here. And it ain't a parking lot without your handicapped parking these blue lines you know represent handicapped parking only don't park there he'll you'll get a ticket you'll get a ticket I'm telling you don't park there the, the Buku ticket enforcement agency will come after you and they'll be like BAM ticket on your windshield and you come out of the cinema from watching a movie you're like dang I got a ticket cuz I parked in the handicapped parking only and I ain't handicapped so don't park there um you can see he's got the C over there for cinema and as well as over there and for some people, they might be like, what is that? You know, these pictures. And those are to represent, you know, like, movies that are being shown in a the theater or movies that are going to be coming out soon in the theaters, you know. Coming soon, March 2014, The Burning Skull. You know, something like that, you know. That was my movie voice. I don't know how good it was, but we're going with it. And then that's the same thing with these things, you know. There's one there and one here. These are also supposed to be, like, you know, advertisements for movies. So now we'll head into the movie theater. And got some more up there. And you can see these like pillars. He's got these this cool design here. Instead of it just being straight sandstone all the way up, he you know added some some design to it. He's got the C there again for cinema. Got some seating here, waiting for your movie to start. Got the fountain. Well not really a fountain, it's kind of like a I don't know. A, a water feature. I'm just gonna call it that. And then over here is like your ticket booths. You got a bunch of them. You come in here and be like, I want to see Burning Skulls. And then bam, you go watch Burning Skulls in Theater One. You got Theater One there and Theater Two over there. We'll go check that out in a second. Back here, behind the ticket booths, we got you know where they keep the tickets and the money in here. And then across on this side, we got some some booths here you can sit in and eat your popcorn or drink your soda. Got uh, pinball machines, two of them. You got arcades right here. And then over here, this is like the little concession stand where you get your popcorn, your slushy, your candy for the movie. You got Berry Blast and Banana, I forget what he called it. I remember Berry Blast. That one's good this yellow one I don't remember banana smoothie screw it um, cash register got this the, the stove here and then you can see over here there's a staircase right here and it leads up to this upper floor but he didn't get time to finish this 
There's lots of stuff he was doing in this world before, like I said. And I repeat myself just in case, you know, somebody's seen this video and they haven't seen part one or part two. But he quit building in this world because at first, you know, there's multiple reasons. But at first because, you know, he w was building and one day his game froze and then he loaded it back up and it would freeze every time he loaded it. And then, you know, they did the thing where we can't add picture frames anymore because he exceeded the limit of picture frames. I think I've already demonstrated this. Where he can't place picture frames in here, which really sucks because even if he came back in here and wants to start building, you really can't fully furnish, in my opinion. And I think he feels the same way as you just, without picture frames, something just doesn't look right. You know, you got when you furnish something, you got to be able to add picture frames. And as you can see, he, he likes his picture frames. See him? Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of picture frames. That's where all your picture frames went, man. On the wall right here. Bam. I think there's like 400 right there. <laughs> but like I said, you got Theater 1 here and Theater 2 over there. We'll go into Theater 1. Ticket entrance. Bam. Give the guy my ticket. Oh, here's some more. There's like four. That's like four. And this is like 450 right here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but we come down in here. And if we bust the left, this is a projector room. So, you know, the guy would be back here, and he would put the movie on the reel, and it would start spinning up, and then it projects out there onto the screen. And let me grab one of these or something. Yes, there are. I remember those being in there. Come over here, and first let me show you this. You can see the lights are on. They're already on. And I think the screen, doesn't the screen turn on? I don't know, maybe it doesn't. I might be thinking of my old world. I think I don't know. Let's let's do this. No, no, no. Wait. This is it. This button. See, he's got it to where the lights turn off. Yeah, and the screen does come on. That's right. Yeah, he's he's got it to where those lights that were on turn off, and these lights above the screen come on. And, you know, the movie screen comes on. Bam. And then up here, you would hit it again when the movie's over, and the screen turns off, and everybody can see now and they're not tripping over each other trying to get out of the movie theater so we would hit this the movie screen comes on and then we put the disc in here and then just wait for it wait for it don't let me down there we go five four three two one nothing happened no that's <laughs> you guys probably thought something was gonna come up on the screen huh no nah. minecraft isn't that advanced at least not on the xbox maybe on the pc we could have added you know a scrolling screen and we could have had a scene going on here but this is as far as we can get on the xbox version because i don't know if you guys can tell on the video but for me it's pretty laggy with just this little machine going so for that to work right there is pretty impressive in itself but to make that 54321 on the screen come on and off is this little code in here. And again, I'm not really going to try to explain this. It's kind of complicating. But that thing spinning in a circle, if you can even tell, those blocks are spinning in a circle. And it's a code. And that code sends signals to each one of these pistons, which pushes out blocks at certain times. And basically you get, you know, 54321. And it's just a cool little feature, you know. It's at least something on the screen that works rather than nothing. Which, even nothing would be fine because, again, it's Minecraft. And, again, you got to use your imagination. So, there we go. There's that. That's pretty much the theater. You can see the, you know, the roof, the arch design, which goes with the front arches outside, leads into the interior. And the cinema is awesome. I think he made one of the coolest looking cinemas I have ever seen. And I'm not just saying that because he's my friend. But I really, really do like the cinema. I think it is a really great design. So there's that. <clears throat> and we'll move on. We'll kind of go in a circle. We did most of the stuff on that side of the world. Back here, he built this bridge and this windmill. And there was going to be more stuff put out here eventually, but again we ended up having to stop building in this world because of the reasons I already stated 
But here's a windmill. And you can see again with the windmill you got the like the water wheel out here which would spin and generate some power and make the thing spin and all that cool stuff. And there's like a stairway right here to walk up there. Come up here. You got the water here. Let me get rid of this. And I don't remember exactly what's in here. I think it just goes up to the top up here. Then we're going to get dizzy. Woo! Okay. So we got we can look out from here though. We can get a nice view of the cinema. That's the apartments. We'll go in there next. We got the, the bridge here. I remember one thing he was going to add in this world. And it was going to be a pirate ship somewhere around here. He was going to add like a pirate ship in the side of a mountain which would have been really cool maybe we'll do that on the Xbox One edition lots of plans for me and I know he's got lots of plans too on the Xbox One edition of this game because we're gonna be able to pretty much do anything the PC can do we're gonna be able to do just about I believe so that's gonna be awesome man I cannot wait alright I'm gonna so we don't get dizzy again I'll just bust my way out but yeah it's a cool cool little windmill here Cannot wait for the Xbox One edition. I think it's right around the corner, and I cannot wait. I'm gonna build a city again. So yeah, here's the bridge. You know, it leads obviously across the water here, and it's a pretty simple design, but it's a good-looking design. It's not like just plain. You know, it's not too crazy looking, but it looks good. And I know it was just something he wanted to add. He wanted a bridge in this world. Other than, you know, the bridge I already showed you guys. He put this one over here. So we'll move along. And we'll check this out now. Which is the apartments. And you can see it's made out of... Is this stone? can't tell from that far. Yeah, it's stone and orange wool. And I know he built this in survival. Um... That was built in creative. All of this stuff was built in survival. All this over here. Um, let me see. Let me check this side out. That block, I think, got burnt. What? What happened? There's a block missing there. That's weird. Here's the back. Here's the, this side. And now we'll go inside. So we'll drop down here. Go inside the apartments. And again, here's the messed up doors since they did that one update, which I don't remember which one it was. So this is, a, you know, one of the apartments. As soon as you walk in, you got a couch, you got a TV, got a bookshelf, you got a storage area. These are supposed to be speakers for, you know, like the surround sound. And then in here, this is like the master bedroom. You got another TV and stuff, got a couch, and here's the master bed. And he's got a bar over here. Can't go wrong with having a bar in your own room, right? That's what I'm saying. Nice little bar here. And we'll go back across over here. We got the kitchen. Got the stove burning. Who's cooking? No one's cooking. And this is supposed to be a fridge. Either it wasn't going to put a door here, or maybe it fell off. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Um, here's the kitchen table. The dishwasher and then here's the bathroom oh, I, I, he didn't finish this either I thought he had this finished but you also got to remember some of this stuff I know he had finished and when the world started messing up that you know he had a backup save which is pretty much this save here and that's why when we get over to the uh, hotel and I think I've already explained this in another video that the hotel you know was finished and then the the game started freezing every time he would you know start it up and so he had to go back to a backup save which some of the stuff was finished and you know he lost it because he had to go back to an older save so that might be why some of the stuff isn't finished but it's got multiple floors I don't even know how many floors is it one two let me hold on let me get a better view one, two, three, four, five. Five stories high. 
And I guess we'll check this McDonald's out. And then I'll end this episode. So, let's check out the McDonald's. Got the Golden Arches. Always love them Golden Arches. And here's the front of it. Here's one of the sides over here. Here's the back side with the drive through And then here's this side where you would order from the speaker. So we'll check the outside out first. So as you're driving down the road, you're like, mmm, them golden arches, I can't resist. And then you come pulling in, you're like, you're like, how can I help you? Welcome to McDonald's. How can I help you? Let me take your order. And you're like, give me everything on the menu. And they're like, all right. And, and then you order, or not, not order, you pay. And then you pull up, and you get all your food. And then you drive off and go eat it. That's pretty much how that works, I think. I'm not sure. I think so. I could be wrong. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, now we're inside the McDonald's. Employees only. Don't go back. I can't go back there. I don't work here, so we'll just have to leave that for another minute. I'm just kidding. We'll go in there in a minute. We got the tables here, and you guys are like, "Wow, those tables are pretty low." But let's see. Is that right? Is that right? Up. Oh, nope. 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 Is that right? Is that right? Nope. Nope. What about this? Kind of hit the lever. I don't even know where the there's. Oh my god. This one? Mm, this one. How about that one? That one. <laughs> this one. There it is. So you hit this button, and you can see the tables popped up. Did they, why aren't they going down? I broke them. I hit too many buttons. But anyways, you guys saw the tables were, like, down, you know, during closing hours. So someone will come in. Open up the McDonald's because this one ain't 24 hours. Sorry, if you live anywhere near here, you have to go further to a 24 hour one that's you know further away out of the city. This one's only, you know, we we close early. You know, we don't we're not 24 hours. So these tables get closed after hours after they've been cleaned, and then when we open up, bam, they pop up, and there you go. You can come here and you can eat, nom, 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 and then you can leave. And we got up oh, again mustard and ketchup. Can't go, can't go wrong with mustard and ketchup. I don't know why I always say that. Don't ask me. But back here, you know, you got the kitchen. Obviously, here's, you know, oh broke that. Um, that was supposed to be a fridge. I totally broke the door, and I somehow have wheat in my hand. Um, and right here, this is you know where you would pay at the drive-through, and this is where you pick up your food. So that's the McDonald's. And I, th I think I broke... Is it this button? I don't know. I broke the tables. I wanted to lower the... Oh, there they go. Lower the tables. Mission accomplished. We are now closing. Sorry if you were in the middle of eating. Your food is on the floor. Um, but now we're leaving. And now... I, I guess we'll check the target out real quick since we're right here. And we'll pick up in you know part four from the target so let's check this out really quick so I can end this video and then upload it and you guys can watch it so this is obviously the target hence you know target and the target symbol and this again is something he built in survival and the reason he built this was to have a place where he could have everything that anybody would need if they wanted to come in here and build you know once we go in there you'll see what I mean you know he's, he has chest with like cobblestone, stone, you know, chisel, not chisel brick, but like stone bricks, wood, pickaxes, all that stuff, you know, normally what Target carries, no, I'm kidding, but yeah, he built this Target for that, and there's the front, here's this side, and I think this Target turned out really cool, here's the back, and then here's this side, now let's go check it out inside. <clears throat> Again, we got the automatic doors here. And so you could walk in and be like, I gotta get me some, what's in here? Some wood. I need a boat. Or I just grab chest, that's not a boat. Grab a boat, some wood, some sticks. And then you come over here and you're like, bam. 
let me ring all this stuff up and there you go you bought all your stuff and then you go build your house so yeah that, that's pretty much what all these chests have in them some of them don't have anything right now but yeah this is supposed to be like a, you know, a little store where you can come get your stuff and then this stuff this stuff wow I'm losing it this thing right here is a trash can so you come over here and if, if I didn't want this wheat anymore I would throw it in there and I would hit dispose trash and then boom it falls into I think it's lava down there or fire it either has a nether uh, nether rack down there and it's on fire so that when it falls in there it burns or it's got lava whatever it still does the same thing but say I threw this boat in there and I was like whoops wrong item didn't want to throw the boat in there let me get that back you hit return items and it pushes it towards you and there it is it returned it to me so that's a cool little you know trash can there so that's the target and it's an awesome target I like it <clears throat> it looks really good you know it like really looks like a target <laughs> especially with the sign up there so yeah that's gonna do it for this part of the Buku World Tour this was part three and we'll pick up from this target and we'll move on with the Buku World Tour and we'll continue touring all these awesome things in this world so I hope you guys are enjoying this and thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video so see you guys later